So hello and yes, welcome back to another video guys. Now it's actually been like a good two weeks since I filmed a video here for the channel. Um, purely because I've just been super busy and I have done a few live streams as well. So I haven't been completely absent. Um, but yeah, I wanted to come back today and do a video which I've been meaning to do ever since we went into 2022. So nowadays, Marvel, the MCU, it's taken over the world and it's got even more bigger in the last year or so. Um, throughout 2021, I think we had nine entries into the MCU, and 2022 is looking like we're also going to get a good six or seven more entries um, with the movies and the TV side of things. So I thought I would rank at the start of every year every MCU product, so that's movie and TV show, um, you know, and at the end of, you know, when we go into 2020. Three, I will rank everything again with what's come out in 2022. Plus, my opinion might have changed on some of these, the order that they're in at the minute. So, yeah, we've got 32 things in the MCU now. So, of course, up to the end of 2021, um, we saw Spider-Man, No Way Home and Hawkeye release. Um, so, yeah, we're up to there, basically. So, if you're watching this after Moon Knight or Doc Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has already come out then, spoiler alert, they're not going to be on this list. Also, spoiler warnings for every MCU product. <laughs> because, yeah, if I might act, I, say accidentally, I might say something that's spoiler-related. I probably will, in fact. Um, so, yeah, you have a warning there as well. Also, this is from, what, 2008, the first Iron Man film, to, you know, 2021. So, people are going to be like, what about the Sam Raimi films? Because they're no way home. I mean, they're not technically MCU films, so <laughs> I'm not including them. Um, but anyway, let's get started. So coming in in last place, in 32nd, my least favourite Marvel film. And yeah, I, I just don't like this movie. It's Captain Marvel. That's right, I'm a sexist. I've put the first one starring or with the lead being a female last. Yeah, um, this film had absolutely no soul to it. In terms of filmmaking, it was so dry and boring. You could tell they made this movie just so they could put her in Endgame. Brie Larson as well gives a very wooden performance. Um, the character of Captain Marvel, thank God she was a bit more interesting in Endgame because here she's actually quite unlikable at times. And in terms of building up the rest of the MCU, adding to the universe. It really doesn't do much for anyone. Like, the scrolls aren't that great. Uh, it really doesn't add to S.H.I.E.L.D. or anything. You know, bringing Phil Coulson back seemed quite pointless thinking about it. Um, the, the only things I liked in this movie, and I'm being dead honest here, the only things I genuinely liked was Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury and Ben Mendelsohn in this. Um, I thought he was a really good addition to the MCU. Other than that, even the visuals aren't great a lot of the time in this film. It's just a very, very underwhelming movie. Uh, coming in in 31st place, we have Thor The Dark World. This is one which I think a lot of people would expect to be bottom. I think it is most people's bottoms. Um, yeah, again, this also just feels like another one that they felt they had to make. It's like, oh, we're doing... After the Avengers, it's like, okay, we're doing the, the next Iron Man film, the next Captain America. We better do another Thor movie as well. And it just seems like, whereas Iron Man 3 and Captain America 2 had ideas behind them, this one, it sort of felt like, oh, we ain't got a great idea, but we got to make it anyway. we got to give Thor his follow-up movie. We don't want really to get him to get lost or left behind the other two. They brought in very generic directors for this one um, from Game of Thrones. Yeah, there's a lot of things that don't work about this movie. There are a couple things I do really like, though. I love Thor and Loki bouncing off each other. Um, their chemistry is great. They really carry the middle act of this movie. Also, I think the CGI is pretty good in this film. I love Thor's suit. I love the look of Asgard. And the score is surprisingly decent as well. The film itself, though, feels very empty, very soulless. Um, the villain, M Malekith sucks the dark elves these are meant to be like the most ancient you know villains we've seen in the mcu to date and um they suck they really suck um so yeah thought of dark world not a very good movie and coming in in 30th place right in front of it is thor <laughs> now some people quite like this movie um which is Fair enough. I don't know. I, I didn't mind this movie on first watch, but I've really grown to dislike this movie. I feel like Kenneth Branagh 
who can obviously be a great director. We've seen it now with things like um, Belfast. But with this movie, it's very strange. He moves in a very, very one-dimensional route. It just The movie just doesn't seem to carry much weight to it. You can sort of predict how everything is going to go. Like, literally, when Thor's about to pick the hammer up in the mud, it's like, I know how this is going to go. When he fights the big monster with the zappy face, I know how this is going to go. When you get to the end of the movie where he actually fights Loki and, you know, and they fight on the Rainbow Bridge, I know how that's going to go. There's just so much of that going on in this movie. It just doesn't really feel that life ready like it's got much soul to it this movie again looks good Hemsworth cast really well not sure about the eyebrows but yeah Thor really really underwhelming film for me then coming in in 29th place is the incredible Hulk the dark sheep of the MCU it's it's a weird movie this one because I do think it actually opens up okay um and I, there are elements about it that I actually quite enjoy um and I like the final act of the movie, where there's the big fight and stuff. I think it's cool. Abomination looks great. Um, it's just the whole middle portion of the movie. It, it, it honestly reminds me of Attack of the Clones, Star Wars, where it opens really well. you got the chase for Naboo, and then you got the closing on Geonosis. The big fight is awesome. you got this whole middle portion with this love story, where the characters don't connect very well. It feels very forced. It's really cringy at times. So, yeah, there's some real elements in this movie that don't work like that. Also, of course, Edward Norton, was he right for the role? I don't think he was a bad Hulk, and I think he would have really grown into the role, but now, of course, we've become so familiar with... Um, uh, oh, uh, Mark Ruffalo, sorry, had a brain fart there. And Mark Ruffalo's great in the role, so yeah, uh, this film, very near. Then, in 28th place, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah, it's so weird, between Infinity War and Endgame, we had these... You know, we had Captain Marvel, which I personally just didn't like. And we have this, which is just very near. Again, it just feels like filler, complete filler. And it's such a shame because there's so many great names attached to this. Like Paul Rudd, I love. Um, Evangeline Lilly is great. She's coming into her own as uh, the Wasp here. Michael Douglas, of course, is fantastic. Um, you know, so many fantastic names attached to this movie. But I just feel like the directors couldn't, he couldn't be bothered to make this movie. There's nothing original about it. There's nothing interesting. It's very flat. Like the cinematography is bland. The color palette is bland. The score is bland. It's just all as, there's nothing particularly bad about this movie, I'll say. But there's nothing particularly good. It's just all very, yeah. And then you get to the end and the post credit scene is the most exciting thing about this film. So, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, coming in in 27th place is going to be our first Marvel series and our only animated entry, and that is What If. So, yeah, this I wasn't 100% sure how canon this was to the MCU, um, but going by the Doctor Strange trailers, it's it's pretty bloody canon now, I think. <laughs> um, so out of the 10 episodes, I liked episode two, um, the one where T'Challa becomes Star-Lord. I liked the one where... Tony Stark and Killmonger sort of become friends and Killmonger manipulates Tony Stark. I liked the the double part of finale with Ultron. I think there was one around the middle I quite enjoyed, but <laughs> I've already forgotten what it was. I thought this show was really disappointing. I thought the opening one was bland. And then, oh, it was the Doc Strange one I didn't mind, sorry, as well. The Doc Strange one was pretty good. But there were just so many missed opportunities in this. The zombie one was the biggest disappointment. That episode felt so rushed. So rushed. Um, there was like some lines in it, I can't remember, where I think Okoye killed Zombie Falcon. And the Winter Soldier, just he was there as well. And Okoye said to Fal uh, the Winter Soldier, like, I'm sorry, he was your friend. He's dead now. And then the <laughs> Winter Soldier just like looks at the camera and goes, I should be sad, but I'm not. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? What the hell's happening? Um, and then there was the Party Thor episode, which was just straight up bad, I thought. I thought it was really, really bad. Also, I feel like the animation style just felt very cheap. 
And it, I don't know if that's because at the same time the Bad Batch was coming out. And I don't really want to compare it to the Bad Batch because that was a little bit underwhelming as well. Not as underwhelming as this, I'll say. But, like, that looks so good. And comparing it to this, I thought, like, the lighting was really weak at times in this. Um, and the voice acting was really all over the place. It ranged from excellent to awful. So, yeah, very, very strange show. Then we have, in 26th place... We have Iron Man 2, one which gets a little bit too much hate. It's definitely the weak, weaker part. It's this low down on my list. But yeah, Iron Man 2, it's a very messy movie. And again, feels a bit rushed after the success of the first one. Like, oh my god, we got to make another one. But there are some great elements to this one still. Um, um, I, I, You know, the War Machine stuff in this is great. Robert Downey, of course, returning is fantastic. The introduction of Black Widow, which is really good. I love Justin Hammer in this film. I actually really like Whiplash as well at times. He makes me laugh, you know. Where is my bird? Um, yeah, and it's good. It's a good movie. I just feel like the plot itself... There's a lot going on in this movie. You have the whole plot with Whiplash. Then you've got the, the Justin Hammer going on as well. You've got Black Widow being introduced. You've got the Stark Expo. Um, we've got Tony becoming an alcoholic, we've got Tony dying, there's just so much going on in this movie, I feel like the film gets a bit lost, it's juggling too much, but it's not as bad as some people make out, but yeah, it's not great either. Then we have Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, this was actually a decent movie, I, I, it's great to see an MCU film not set in present day, um, even though at the time the MCU was still very fresh, so that's I think that's one of the things I love going back to this film with, I'll say. That it's not set present day. Um, yeah, Chris Evans, great casting as well, I want to say. Fantastic. Um, and I really love Hugo Weaving um, as Red Skull. And it's really, really great. Hayley Atwell as well and Tommy Lee Jones deserve a shout for this movie as well. Yeah, I think this film's really good. I love how it opens and I love the middle act to this movie. I think it opens pretty good and in the middle act it really runs with the whole you know, washed up kind of Captain America becoming the hero. And then the third act maybe goes a bit over the top, goes full on superhero mode, but hey, it's it's still fun. Um, yeah, I enjoy this movie. Um, yeah, we're sort of in the part now where I'm like, yeah, these ones are good. These are good. These aren't great. They're like six out of 10 to seven ballpark here. Um, coming in 24th place is our first Avengers film and big shocker here, it's Age of Ultron. I was actually really disappointed in the cinema with this one. But, you know, I've rewatched it about ten times <laughs> over the years now because it's an Avengers movie. And there's some elements to it which are pretty good. I actually like Ultron. I know that's one of the things people criticise about this movie. And he is a bit too comedic, I will admit. But I, I think he looks cool. And James Spader is a perfect choice to voice him. I just wish he was a bit more menacing. Um, of course, Scarlet Witch is introduced in this one, and she's fantastic. One of my favourite MCU characters now. Quicksilver, <laughs> been embarrassing what they done with him in this one, I think. Um, uh, Aaron Taylor-Johnson as well, did not play him well. I think everything about his character is not good. Easy one of, easily one of the weakest things about this movie. I just feel like the pacing of this movie is really off as well, is one thing I'll say. The pacing is not great here, but the fight scenes are awesome. Um, yeah, and the party scene is great. Coming in in 23rd place is Black Widow. Yeah, so uh, yeah. I like this one a lot more when I saw it in cinema. And I think my love for it's died down a little bit. I've realised that the f the final act isn't great, I don't think. Um, but I really love how the film opens. And the second act was my favourite parts of it where, again, you were sitting down with uh, Natasha and her family, because I actually quite like the side characters in this, I know some people don't, um, <laughs> but I love Florence Pugh's Elena, and I really liked Red Guardian, David Harbour made me laugh, I thought he was really good in the movie, um, the final age, yeah, it goes big battle, and you know, it is what it is, it's a big superhero movie, I don't get why people get so upset about this all the time, but I just really didn't care for the villain, and you know, Taskmaster, it made sense what they'd done with Taskmaster in this one, but it it sort of has now, I think, wiped that character out. Like, oh, is that it? We're not going to see Taskmaster? We're not going to see the Taskmaster from the comics where they, you know, he chats crap to people? I, I don't know. That's kind of what I want to see. But anyway, coming in in 22nd place is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, 
It's this high because it is a well-made show and I think, you know, there's nothing too bad about it. But this is a really forgettable MCU product. I genuinely don't have much to say about it. Um, I think Bucky and Falcon are, you know, surprise, surprise, the best things about the show. That, you know, they, they're developed really well. I hate what they do with Falcon at the start, though, him giving up the shield. It's like, so the last time we saw you with the shield, you said you'd do your best. And now we're seeing you with it and you're giving it away instantly. So I wasn't a fan on that. Um, but yeah, I think the show just sort of moved at a very steady pace and it's like, I just think the thing is with WandaVision and Loki, which we'll get to, I was always super pumped for the next episode. This one, I almost forgot when the next episode was coming out. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. There's another episode of that today. Okay, sure. There was never anything I come away with, apart from the finale. The finale was really fun, but every other episode I come away like, oh, look, it's the people from Wakanda. Oh, look, there's... Zemo, he put the mask on and it wasn't near as exciting as I wanted it to be. Um, but, you know, it was entertaining and that's why it's his high. Uh, coming in in 21st place is going to be Eternals. Yeah, now I, I, yeah, I got swept up in this one a little bit at the cinema, but I was expecting this movie to be top 10, even maybe top 5 MCU products and yeah, it's not, it's just not that, is it? It's 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 a competently made movie. Some people are way too harsh on it. It really doesn't deserve some of the hate it's got. It is a good movie, um, but yeah, it's bogged down with some pacing issues for sure. Um, and it, it, the runtime I think hurts this movie because I don't feel the need to rewatch this one too much. I've watched it three times now, and I don't know if I feel the need to rush out and watch it again because I just feel like it's too long and I don't want to put myself through. When I go to the MCU, I don't really want a film that's that kind of slow-paced. Also, I, I really like most of the characters in this also. I think they've done a good job actually developing them, considering it's a whole new group of heroes. Um, so, yeah, I'll give the film that as well. Coming in in 20th place is going to be Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, so, yeah, I was actually really excited for this movie. Mysterio, first off, looks great in it. Jay Gyllenhaal's fantastic. Um, I love Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Um, yeah, I, and I was also really excited to see him leave New York. I know some people get upset about that, but we had five films before Marvel picked him up that were set in New York. So I was like, I don't see the problem with seeing Spider-Man actually go somewhere else for once. Um, where I think this film bottled it was all in the final fight. I just thought the final fight was maybe a bit much. Like, he was walking around on the bridge without his mask on. I'm like, how are people not clocking your Spider-Man? Even though, obviously, the post credit scene happens. Um, <laughs> and then, like, I just feel, like, happy taking the kids into the Tower of London. It's like, oh, it's... this feels even really far-fetched for Marvel, I feel. I don't know. <laughs> but I do really enjoy this movie. I just think it's easily the weakest of the home trilogy then we have guardians of the galaxy volume 2 which was also a bit of a disappointment however i still have a lot of fun with this movie this film has character to it which is why it's this high on the list james gunn's style and flair is poured all over this movie with the dialogue and the visuals and the the music and the score itself um it's great um in that element i think where it falls a bit flat is plot it doesn't have much build-up to stuff. Things just sort of happen really quick. Like the build-up of meeting Peter Quill's father, Ego, played by the amazing Kurt Russell. It just wasn't that, you know, it was just sort of like, oh, there he is. Here we go. We're going to his planet. Oh, he killed your mum, Peter. Oh, okay. Oh, now they're fighting. That's how the film sort of felt to me. It just felt very, oh, uh, yep, okay, now this happens. Oh, okay, now this happens. Saying that, though, you know, this has a lot of really good elements to it. I love what they do with Yondu and Nebula in this movie. So well developed. Um, so, yeah, there's some really great elements to this film still. Um, and I love James Gunn's style. So, yeah. Okay, then we've got, in 18th place, we've got Doctor Strange. Um, yeah, this was a really, really steady movie. I really enjoyed this. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch, perfect casting as Doctor Strange. Um I, all the side characters as well. The only area where it falls a bit flat in terms of that is the villain. Um, Mads Mikkelsen was wasted. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love Doctor Strange's powers and the times where we get to see him and the Sorcerer Supreme um, 
before him use their powers and they go into the mirror dimension and stuff. It's awesome. It looks brilliant. And I can't wait to see more of that wackiness in the second film this year. Um, I, there just wasn't enough for it, of, of, of it. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't speed there. There wasn't enough of the weird wackiness for me in this film. Um, which is why it fell this short on the list. But it was strange. Good movie. Then in 17th place we have Hawkeye. Um, the last MCU thing we got. I think the finale happened after Spider-Man. I can't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, I was excited for this. I thought Hayley Steinfeld cast as Kate Bishop was perfect. Um, then bringing in Yelena as well. Great. Couldn't wait to see that. The pizza dog. Adorable. And I like Hawkeye. I was happy he was getting something. I love the Christmas themes as well. Um, and I love the first three episodes of this series. I thought it opened so well. I was like, this is great. This is going to be up there with Loki. And then the later three episodes happened, and I really fell out of love with this show. I feel like episode four and five was just, four was just Hawkeye and Kate Bishop hanging out and talking, which was great to see them interact, but half the dialogue was pointless. And then the following episode was Kate Bishop and Yelena. And again, it was great to see them interact, but half the dialogue was pointless. And by the end of it, I felt like... That was a wasted 40 minutes of an episode. Like, barely anything happened. They they followed the exact same storyboards of intro with a little fight scene, talking for, like, 20, 25 minutes, and then a tease at the end of a character. Um, yeah, and then the, episode, the fine, final episode happened, and it was fun. It was really fun, um, and I did like it overall. It was a good time. Just feel like Kingpin... I don't know, he just didn't feel as menacing as I was hoping he would have. He's, he felt very quick. But again, I think they're setting that up for Echo. So maybe once Echo comes out, I'll look back on the finale with Kingpin a bit differently. So yeah, Hawkeye, really good. I don't want to sound too negative on it because I did, I did enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it, it just really lost me, which is a shame because it started so well and it just went in another direction. Coming in in 16th place is Ant-Man, the first one. Um, this is just a really silly fun movie and it feels like they really ran with the silly wackiness of this one a lot more than the second movie. Um, this one they just had a lot of crazy ideas which I thought worked really well like especially in the final fight scene with Thomas the tank engine growing big <laughs> made me laugh you got the big ant as well. Um, I love um, Ant-Man's daughter in this as well um, and Paul Rudd and his team I think are a lot funnier in this movie have a lot more laugh out loud moments um so yeah and i know it's not saying much because the villain in this one still isn't great but i think he's better than the villain in the second movie um so yeah I, again i i think that thinking um on filmmaking from a filmmaking standpoint like honestly the last four or five things we've talked about are better than ant-man but i just think ant-man's really innocent fun so yeah uh coming in in 15th place is going to be iron man 3 um, I really like Shane Black as a director when he's not doing a Predator film. And I think he's done a great job here. I don't get why people don't like this movie. I think this film does a better job than The Dark Knight Rises at taking Tony Stark out of his suit and making him work back to earn the suit. I think he does a much better job than what they did with Bruce Wayne coming back to become Batman in The Dark Knight Rises. Um, and I feel like this film, the, the twist with the villain, I think works great. <laughs> I love what they did with the Mandarin. I know that Guy Pierce's character isn't a great lead villain, um, but he does the job well enough. There's been many worse villains in the MCU. Uh, the final fight scene is great. The music in this is really good. I love the Christmas setting again. Um, yeah, I really like Iron Man 3. I don't really see the problems with it. Then in 14th place, we have Black Panther. A film, it's like a coin. It's there's there's one side which is brilliant to this movie, and I love so many aspects about it. And then it you just get to the final act and it drops the ball, um, which is a real shame. But it's this high because of the first two acts. The first two acts are fantastic. Um, T'Challa is such a well developed character throughout the first two acts. The costumes are beautiful in this movie, and the score is fantastic. And it deserved to be going up for those Oscars. I will admit. Not best picture, but costumes and the score, absolutely. Um, the side characters were all fantastic. I love Okoya, I think her name is, the leader of the guards. Um, love all of that stuff. It just, and I, you know, love Killmonger as well. Andy Serkis' villain's great as well. 
fantastic. It just gets to the final act and it becomes a bit of a mess. It just drops the ball. Some of the CGI is terrible. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Coming in in 13th place is going to be Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. One of the most fun times I've had at the cinema in recent years. Um, yeah, again, I don't think this film does anything that particularly blew me away, but it was just so fun and energetic. And it feels a lot like Black Panther in a way, even though it, it moves a lot quicker. I don't think the pacing is quite as good as Black Panther, but it develops um, Shang-Chi really well and the side characters. And you get to the final act and yeah, this one is huge CGI battle, but this one feels a bit more fitting for the character and what's been built up. And it also looks a lot better. Like I thought the final fight here with the dragons fighting, I thought looks fantastic. Um, love all the all the cast. The, I'm not sure on the guy's name who plays Shang Chi, but he's brilliant. The guy who plays the villain was great as well. Ben Kingsley coming back was great. I thought Shang Chi was super duper fun, um, and I can't wait to see the sequel. Coming in in twelfth place is going to be Spider Man Homecoming. Yes, the first one. Uh, you know, this was really exciting, this film. It was great to see Spider-Man enter the MCU in a solo movie. Tom Holland is so perfectly cast. I love Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Um, but I feel like Tom Holland is just the perfect comic book adaptation of this character. Um, he looks the age and, you know, he plays the part so well. I love the cast in this. You know, Zendaya is fantastic. I think she's a great Michelle Williams, you know, new character and stuff. Um, it was It's interesting seeing, like, not Harry Osborn as his friend, having Ned from the comics there instead. There's some interesting stuff there. And Michael Keaton as the Vulture is great. The scene in the car where he drops um, Peter off to prom is fantastic. Yeah, this film's got great pacing to it. I think it ties into the Avengers stuff really well. I know people don't like that, and I will admit in Far From Home, it goes a bit far with tying it into Tony Stark. But this film, I get it. It's, like it's the first time we can see Spider-Man interact with the Avengers or have, him have his story tie into the Avengers. Let's do it. So yeah, really like this film. Coming in in 11th place, just missing out my top 10 is going to be one that started it. Oh, it's Iron Man, Mr. Robert Downey Jr., um, directed by John Favreau. You know, behind the scenes of this film, it was a mess. I'm surprised it turned out as well as it did. Uh, yeah, I think this film's gritty and dark at times, and I love that. And then it has the fun, um, energetic energetic superhero feel to it. Um, and yeah, it has a good villain with Jeff Bridges playing War. Iron Monger? Iron Monger, I think he's called. There's just so many great elements to this. I love the look of it as well. It's aged beautifully, I think. Um, and the ACDC music in it as well. This is just a really, really good first film. Really good first film. Coming in in 10th place is going to be Avengers Assemble. Like, one of the biggest blockbusters ever, you know, that's ever come out. This movie was hype. This is the film that got me not just into the MCU, but into superheroes in general. Because I didn't really grow up with superheroes like other things. Um, this got me into superheroes, got me into the MCU. Yeah, they're, again, the first two acts, they're, they're good, they're entertaining, but they're not great. But the final act is so great, I've had to put it this high. Like, the final fight is so brilliant. Um, yeah, and I do like seeing the Avengers come together. It's it's really interesting. Um, I just, the only complaint I, the only big complaint I have with this movie is, like, how how it looks visually. It looks like a high-budget TV movie, um, which is really weird. And Captain America's suit sucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, ninth place is going to go to Captain America Civil War. I saw this one midnight. Um, this was hype, this movie. Seeing Captain America versus Iron Man. I'd seen the introduction of Black Panther and Spider-Man. Um, seeing Ant-Man meet all the Avengers. It, this was a crazy movie, crazy movie. I really don't have any complaints with it. I feel like they blew their load at the end of the second act with the airport fight. <laughs> and then the final fight, while it was really good, didn't compare to the second act's fight. Um, but I love this movie. I think it's great. My only complaint with it is I wish it was an Avengers film and Captain America got a proper third solo film because it doesn't feel like a Captain America film. Eighth place is going to go to Avengers Infinity War, yes, um, talk about hype, here we are again, 
Um, this film is crazy. Um, you know, it was so great to see every MCU character but Hawkeye and poor Ant-Man <laughs> um, share the screen. It was great to see them all together. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'd say I've got a couple negatives as to why it's not higher, but I love this movie. From this point on, I just really love everything. Um, my only complaints are there's a couple jumps between characters like Iron Man, Doctor Strange and Spider-Man will go off to space and it takes about 50 minutes, literally, to see them again. Um, so it's just a couple bits like that and I, I feel like there aren't as many risks in this one as there are in Endgame, which we'll get to. Other than that, oh, and I don't really like what the, P, Peter Dinklage in this movie. There you go. Other than that, this film's great. The jokes all land. Visually, it's gr fantastic. The score's fantastic. Um, yeah, and there was a lot of surprises, which I loved. And the few deaths in this one were really heartbreaking. So next up, we have Loki Season 1, I've got to say, of course, because I don't think it's coming in 22, but I think in 23, we will be getting a second season of that. Um, so yeah, this is a show that I've watched twice. I've watched this and WandaVision twice. And it's done the opposite of WandaVision for me, um, which we'll be talking about in a minute. Um, love Loki on a weekly basis. I thought it was great. Loved every episode. I was like, that's the best Marvel show. That was great. And then when I rewatched it, I actually didn't enjoy the finale near as much as I did the first time around. I think the first time I watched it, there was all this um, anticipation as to whether Kang was going to show up in the last episode, a variant of him. And he did. And I think that's why I jumped out of my seat when I watched it live. I was like, that the brilliant. Now it feels like we got five awesome episodes of a great TV show because I really do love Loki. I thought the first five episodes were fantastic. Um, Tom Hiddleston's great in it. I love all the side characters. Sylvia, brilliant. Um, all of the variants of Loki, great. I love the idea of this show, the time vet, time agency and stuff. Um, I think that everything about this show absolutely is fantastic. And in the finale, it just feels like a, a subject from something else in the MCU. It feels like it's almost just build up for season two of Loki or the future of the MCU. Um, so it's really weird. I like the final. I think it's a good episode, but it just feels completely different to the rest of the show, which is why I've put it as my second favorite of the TV shows. Anyway, coming in in sixth place is going to be Thor Ragnarok. Of course, directed by Mr. Taika Waititi. Since I saw this film, I went and watched all of Taika's other films and I've fallen in love with the man. Um, I think he's a fantastic filmmaker and you can tell here there's a real style to this. Um, there's a lot of character to this movie. Um, and, you know, it, Taika makes Thor cool. Because I'm sorry, but obviously I'm not a big fan of the first two Thor films. Um, and he was one of, he was the least interesting Avenger in Age of Ultron, besides Quicksilver. Um, and yeah, he didn't really do much in the first Avengers film. Here, oh, he's cool. He's cracking some great jokes. He actually feels more like he's got a lot more personality to him. There's a lot more emotion to him as well, even though he's cracking more jokes. Um, visually, this film is stunning. I love how bright it is and how it embraces the style of the comics. Um, the soundtrack as well fits this film so perfectly. And it's just additions to this film, like um, Valkyrie, who's great. Jeff Goldblum's character is fantastic. Hela's a great villain. You know, so many awesome facts. And Korg, also great. So yeah, love Ragnarok. Really don't have any, I really don't have any complaints with this one. Coming in in fifth place... I keep flip-flopping fourth and fifth in my head. Um, I'm going to say WandaVision. It was nearly fourth. It was nearly full. I know some people don't like WandaVision. When I first watched it, I really liked it. I didn't love it. I was like, this is really good, really creative. Filmmaking-wise, this is the best thing on this list. Um, I love how each episode, you know, captures a different decade. I think it builds up the story and the mystery elements to it so well, and then it explodes in the end brilliantly. And the fact that some people were disappointed with the finale because Doctor Strange didn't show up because they said in their head he's 100% showing up is not fair on this show because I think the finale is great. Um, the only complaint I had with this when it was airing was that the episode's too short, but now I can binge it. Not a problem. And it works even better um, binging this show. Uh, it's fantastic. Without a doubt in my head, it's the best MCU show. Um, it's so rewatchable. I love Wanda and Vision. They're so funny and so great. The emotions behind this are incredible. The adaptation of the House of M comic, I never thought we'd see. 
Um, there's some real shocking, surprising moments in this. Agatha is brilliant. The music is fantastic. I kind of wish I'd put this forth now. I don't know. I love this show. I think it's brilliant. I really do. Um, so, yeah, WandaVision. <laughs> I really don't get how people just didn't care for this one. I don't get it. But anyway, coming in in fourth place. <laughs> Maybe fifth. I don't know. I've put it fourth. Next year, it might be fifth. Um, or it might be sixth. You know, it depends what we get this year. Spider-Man. No Way Home. <sighs> This was such a great movie. I jumped out of my chair multiple times with the villains, which we knew were in it, and when the other Spider-Man showed up. I, You know, we all had big hunches there that they were going to be in it, but I still jumped out of my chair. The emotional depth to this movie is quite incredible. Um, Tom Holland gives the best performance as Spider-Man we've ever seen here. Um, and as I say, I feel like this is very heavy fan service, this movie. This is the most fan service-y thing we've had in the MCU. But I keep comparing it to Rise of Skywalker because Rise of Skywalker felt it needed to be fan service as well. And the Rise of Skywalker is a complete mess and it didn't make sense in the Star Wars universe. This that makes sense. They made it made sense and it fits. It works. Everything flows well. You understand why characters are here, why they're making the decisions they're doing. And on top of that, you have a great story with a lot of emotional depth, which is very surprising, <laughs> I think, after the other two Spider-Man films. While I did enjoy them, I weren't expecting this mo much of an emotional depth to it. And it has great pacing, this movie. Great pacing. So yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home uh, is fourth place. Coming in third place is Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. James Gunn, absolute mastermind here. Um, I, I love James Gunn, and I think here he made one of the most unique, fun Marvel films. This has the best pacing of any Marvel film. Um, it does the best job at introducing more than one character. Of course, you've got a whole group here, um, and every one of them is so good. You know, from Peter to Drax to Groot to Gamora to Rocket, they're all fantastic. And all the side characters are really good. And the only weak one, I'd say, is maybe Nebula. But she gets built upon so much in the second film and the Avengers film she's in. So I've, I've really got no complaints. It's so... The music as well was great. And I love just some of the concepts in this. Like the Nova Corps ships when they link up and stuff. It's really clever. Really, really good movie. I don't have any complaints with it, to be honest. Fantastic film. Coming in in second place... Is going to be Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Um, I love this movie. This feels like the most adult thing in the MCU. And what I love about this movie is it's a spy film. It's smart. It really, really pushes its characters to its limits. Like Captain America and uh, Black Widow. That's the best these two characters have ever been on screen before. Same for Nick Fury. This is the best Nick Fury we've seen. The villains are smart. They're menacing. Um, and their plans actually are quite... You know, almost obviously not realistic because we wouldn't have these helicraft carriers going up and shooting people. But it's like if we had that technology, it's like it seems like something some crazy man in the government would do. Um, I love seeing Hydra take over. This film feels intelligent and the punches and the hits really do hit. Um, so, yeah, Captain America and Winter Soldier is, is pretty damn flawless, I think. But number one, I've got to give it to Endgame. Because while there are a couple small little issues, and I mean small issues, because they were really small um, with this movie, wow, they had to wrap up 10 years of this Infinity Saga, and I think they've done it as well as they could. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, they took risks in this movie, big risks, with Thor and Hulk, and it really paid off. Um, the pacing of this film is fantastic. I love that the first act of this movie is about loss and, you know, trying to get back that hope. And then the second act, of course, is, you know, going and getting the stones. And it's so fun to revisit these movies. It's great. It feels like we're revisiting the last 10 years of the MCU. And then the final act is just so epic. Like, it's brilliant. The fight is incredible. Tony Stark's death is the most heartbreaking thing I think I've ever seen in a Marvel product. Um, and Captain America's goodbye as well. Just, it's just so good. It's such a fitting end. It's a really well-made movie. There are not many people that could make a film like this because of how much there is to wrap up and juggle, but they did it. 
So yeah, Endgame, I've got to give it the number one spot. But anyway, there we go. There's my ranking of every MCU product product from 2008 to 2021. We'll be back next year to do it again when we're going to have everything from 2022 included. Uh, at the minute, all I know is Moon Knight, um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder. Um, is it the Marvels? No, sorry, Miss Marvel, sorry, I think. Is this year as well? I don't. Uh, yeah. I get a bit confused now because there's so many things coming up. <laughs> I think Secret Invasion even might be this year. But there's loads of stuff coming this year, so we'll have loads more to add onto the list next year. And the list itself might change by next year because I'm always re-watching Marvel things and flipping them about. So, hey, we'll see. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video as always. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a message. And as always, I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye.